This is Sharon Bogan. We work at Public Health Seattle in King County, and we're really excited to be here to share with you what we know about text messaging and how you can use it to bridge critical communication gaps in your community. Now, text messaging can be an incredibly powerful tool to reach communities during emergencies. But before you implement programs, there is lots to learn. We'll be sharing with you some of our lessons learned so that you can make the most of your investment in this technology. members of Public Health Seattle and King County's communication team during activation of our Emergency Operations Center. When a public health emergency strikes, whether that's an extreme heat wave or pandemic flu or a communicable disease outbreak, our role is to communicate to the public. We work to provide credible, useful information to all members of our community as quickly and as effectively as we can. Not all communication channels are going to work with every audience. Traditionally, we have prioritized working with the media, whether that's newspapers, radio, or television. Over the past decade, though, we've relied more heavily on the internet, with websites, social media sites, and email. But a new and exciting way of directly reaching our audiences is now within our reach. The mobile phone, and in particular, SMS text messaging, is the newest way to reach the community with critical information during an emergency. One of the most powerful examples of how SMS can have an impact occurred in the moments and days following the Haiti earthquake. In the afternoon of January 12, 2010, a 7.0 earthquake struck near the Haitian capital, Port-au-Prince. Millions of people were affected by the quake, and more than 200,000 buildings were damaged or destroyed. Josh Nesbitt, CEO of Medic Mobile, talked to us about how text messaging was used to help. So after the earthquake in Haiti, uh, there was no 911 system or anything like it. Uh, and so we set up a short code 4636 that anyone could text message into for free. And we went radio station to radio station, uh, letting people know they could text their need and their location to that number. And we ended up processing about 80,000 text messages in the first four weeks after the earthquake. Um, and to do that, we recruited about 2,500 Haitian Creole speaking volunteers from all over the world who were translating, categorizing, and mapping every single one of those messages. Uh, and structured reports were then basically delivered to first responders and aid groups uh, within about a couple of minutes after each message being received. We were definitely delivering updates on water drop points, um, essential uh, sort of health tips, things like that. But more than anything, we wanted to interact directly with people's urgent needs. So it was everything from missing persons requests uh, to uh, food and water requests to search and rescue requests. Um, so basically a pretty broad array of needs over the first four weeks or so. So like I said, there was no 911 system uh, and just 1% of the population was on the web. Um, about 1% of the population had access to a landline, but fully 75% uh, owned a mobile phone. So SMS and mobile is really the only way to interact with people uh, at scale. So in lots of ways, um, we are sort of following the market here. Um, we see penetration rates for mobile technology exploding, and this is technology that is finding its way uh, into every aspect of people's lives, and it lives in their pockets. Um, so it's a personal technology that also scales really well. And so uh, it's perfect for health, it's perfect for uh, alerts, and it's perfect for anything um, where you need information from uh, people themselves or delivered straight to people themselves, um, as opposed to organizations um, or other, uh, other entities. And uh, so for things as personal and immediate um, and urgent as health and crises, uh, mobile is, is really the right platform. As Josh Nesbitt mentioned, one of the powerful things about texting is that so many people have mobile phones. Over 300 million cell phones are active in the United States right now, which means that the vast majority of people have a cell phone. Virtually all of these cell phones are text capable. And lots of people are using their cell phones for text messaging. Texting is not technology just for teens, though one study found that teens send an average of 50 texts per day. 
but about three-quarters of adults text, too. The number of texts sent each year in the United States exceeds two trillion. The bottom line is that texting is pervasive. For many people, it is just simply the way we communicate now. Texting is also a great communication channel for reaching traditionally harder-to-reach communities. Unlike the internet and the digital divide, texting has been more quickly adopted by people across a wide range of language, ethnic, and income groups. For example, almost three-quarters of Latino cell phone owners use texting. And for a person on a limited income, a phone call can cost precious minutes. But depending on the plan, texting can be much more affordable. It is important to remember that many phones in the U.S. can't easily text in non-Roman alphabet languages. For the time being, you'll only be able to reach communities via text who use Roman alphabet languages, like Spanish. Texting is powerful because it's personal. People are attached to their phones. The phrase, can't leave home without it, really applies to the relationship many people have with their cell phones. They have their phones with them most of the time and tend to read over 90% of the text messages they receive. Text messages are often more likely to get through than a phone call during an emergency. This is because phone calls require a direct one-to-one -one line of connection, while text messages move through the network more efficiently, using multiple pathways to get to their end destination. And our research has found that most people keep their phones on at night, making SMS a potentially powerful way to reach people during emergencies, no matter what time of day they occur. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Let's clarify what texting is. First of all, SMS stands for Short Message Service. It's also known as text messaging. SMS and text messaging are interchangeable words. Text messages are short messages of up to 160 characters in length. Text can be sent from one phone to another phone or to multiple phones. Text can also be sent from a computer application to many phones simultaneously. But what can you really say in 160 characters? Actually, you can say a lot, particularly when people aren't getting the information in other ways, when they need the information quickly and when it's relevant to them. Throughout history, some of our most compelling messages have been under 160 characters. For example, this famous quote from John F. Kennedy was only 109 characters long. Or what about this one, just 70 characters? The point is, in public health, we're used to having the luxury of lengthy fact sheets and press releases to get our message across. It's a challenge to create good but short messages, but it can be done. If you wanted to design a public health emergency text messaging program, what kinds of messages could you send? You could send basic health and safety messages, such as information about boil water orders. These could be targeted to reach only certain geographic areas. In a disaster like a flood, texting could be used to alert homebound, medically fragile individuals about the need to evacuate and what steps to take. If you had established point of distribution locations for mass medication dispensing, you could send information about pod sites or reminders to take medicines. Texting could be used to improve situational awareness with healthcare facilities. For example, sentinel providers could text in information during an emergency. And texting might be a cost-effective way to communicate important information to tuberculosis-positive residents during a TB outbreak. To summarize, we think texting helps fulfill our responsibility to ensure that information gets to people who need it, particularly during an emergency. It's a communication method that makes sense for many public health needs. Most people have access to phones most of the time. It's fast and more likely to get through when nothing else is working. Michael Laird, Director of Public Health Seattle and King County's Emergency Preparedness Section, thinks that text messaging could be used to great effect during a public health emergency. Well, texting is a technology that is, uh, is fairly new for public health, but it's really critical, uh, and it's going to become more so in the future. Texting is, is already a tool that's used widespread throughout our communities. It's actually very inexpensive. Um, it's used by multiple cultures. Uh, it's a tool that um, we, we can use to reach people with critical time-sensitive information wherever they happen to be at any time, which is a great advantage over things like television and radio and even internet websites where folks normally would be at a computer at some fixed location. Um, so it's a tool that really is the future uh, for us in how we can communicate information rapidly 
uh, to people, again, across a, a larger community. This is how people are re receiving information today. And so this is where public health and other organizations really need to be going in the future in order to, to get critical messages to folks uh, during emergencies.